Hey guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today is a little bit different. Uh, a lot of you have heard that I was in a car crash, and that that's true. Uh, and today we're going to tell you about it. But first, it's not very often you get a second shot. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to introduce you guys to our family. You know, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that, that mean a lot to us. And uh, this is the immediate tactical family. We got Cece over here and uh, Sierra. Okay. <laughs> um, my wife, Tanya, oldest JD, Elena, and Josiah. You know, we've talked about this before, guys, how, how fragile life really is, and it truly is, you know. Um, <clears throat> Man, you got me going. Uh, it's, uh, things happen quick. They really do. And in the past, we've really kept our families out of the videos. And we wanted to protect them. But you guys have become family. And tactical, it's growing to, like, like Matt said, everybody's becoming family. When we meet you at the ramps, we meet you at the lakes, we meet you in the, the grocery stores and, and stuff. It's, it's just turning into one big family. So we wanted to introduce you to our immediate family. So you guys know who's, who's responding to your emails sometimes, who's booking your guide trips, who's, who's shipping off your tactical clothing. This, this is 100%. This is everybody at tactical. And uh, we wanted to introduce you guys. Matt's going to give you guys a story, you know, tell you the story of what just happened. And, uh, you know, obviously we're all thankful that, uh, you know, he's still here and uh, we appreciate you guys and uh, look forward to, uh, to meeting more of you guys. But uh, we're going to turn it over to Matt and his family and uh, yeah. All right. All right. All right, guys. As most of you know, my dad and I were in a serious wreck. Uh, it's been almost two weeks now and uh, took us a while to get home. It took place out in Wyoming. But we wanted to give you a little bit of background and tell you guys what took place uh, because you guys are family. And we know that you care about us and we want you in the loop on, on what's taken place. So uh, we had kept something secret this entire spring. Uh, we had a giant trip planned. We told you guys back at the beginning of the year that we planned to get tactical out of California. You know, we wanted to go east. And uh, that's easy to say in a video, you guys didn't know it was really coming. So what we had actually prepared is we were gonna live on the road for two months. And we were gonna fish in 23 states while we were gone. Just have fun. Just mm -hmm. travel and fish and, and vacation as a family and just have a great time. Uh, and just fish some different water because when we give you guys advice we want to be able to give you the most qualified advice that we could and the best way we could do that is to fish as many places as we could so we were just going to go out on the road and just have a ball this summer so spring is my busiest guide season and i worked on the truck and boat and trailer literally every night of the entire season uh, guide all day work on the boat sometimes until midnight and then get up and guide again in the morning just getting, you know, I had an older boat, but the equipment was brand new. So I literally rewired the entire boat, all new components on the boat, all new electronics, uh, to redid the trailer, everything. I mean, truly everything that you could do, we did, and we got everything perfect because two months on the road and like 12,000 miles, you can break some things. So we wanted to be ready. So fast forward, that trip began a couple weeks ago and the first leg of that trip, we were gonna to go to, to Wisconsin. And CC and Sierra were gonna fly in. Tim and his family were gonna fly in. Our buddy Coop was gonna drive up from Arkansas. We were all just gonna go have a blast together. Just have some fun to kick the whole thing off. And then CC and Sierra and I were gonna start traveling from there. So what we did on the front end is my dad hopped in with me and he and I decided to do that three day drive in six days and we were just gonna have some fun. We we're gonna fish in South Dakota and Minnesota on our way over and then meet up with everybody and start our vacation. So my dad was the guy in the truck with me. Uh, thankfully, the girls were not there. They weren't in the back seat. Uh, it was just my dad and I. So we were only on the second day of this thing 
Uh, we were crossing Wyoming, almost to South Dakota. Truly in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the last town that we had passed was a little tiny town and it was 45 miles back. And uh, we were just on a two lane highway, just cruising, talking, straight road. And uh, I'm gonna do this as matter of fact for you guys as I can. Uh, so we're just driving and there's a truck coming, no big deal, you know, like 10,000 other trucks. And 100, 150 feet out, it started coming across the line. I mean, it was close when it started and just kept coming. Uh, and just kept coming. Ended up like five to six feet into our lane and we had nowhere to go. We're on a two lane highway, head to head, in our lane. And at the last second, I just kicked out, just so we wouldn't take it head on. And we took it in my door. Uh, we really had prepared for this trip, so we invested everything. Uh, starting last fall, we bought a new truck. So thank God we were in a, a big Ram 3500 diesel. We had our Lance camper on top. Uh, and the boat behind us and, and everything was brand new all of it I mean we were really just heading out on the road but uh, I got hit in the door and it rolled us and I didn't after that everything got blurry for a little while um, I realized we were going over it at, at first I you know you just hope it's gonna be okay so I swerved out and just prayed we wouldn't get hit and then the, the impact happened and then I felt us going over and uh, when I was a kid, I was in a rollover, nowhere near as bad, but I was in a rollover. So when we started to go, I'd felt that before. And all I could think, I mean, you just have a fraction of a second. All I could think was just, here we go, hold on tight. And I locked up on that wheel as hard as I could. And over we went, we rolled to, the, to my dad's side. And then after that, I've, I've got nothing. Uh, I didn't even realize at first that I'd been knocked out. It wasn't until a couple days later we were piecing it all together. My dad had all these facts and events that I, I didn't have. Uh, so somewhere in there I, I got knocked out. And I came to, after we had come to a stop, I came to sitting on my door with my head on my seat and my dad was hanging up above me. He asked if I was okay. I said, I, I think I am. Are you okay? And he said, I think so. We need to get out of here. And we were laying on our side. We were laying on my door. And my dad, my dad's in his 70s. And my dad pulled it together. He kicked out the windshield. Uh, but even then, we were trapped. He, uh, and it's, I mean, it's a little blurry there in the middle. So time is screwed up. I think we were trapped in the truck like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, you know, it was, it, it was in the middle of nowhere. People started stopping uh, because all of a sudden people showed up there on the outside of the truck trying to help, but we were wedged in. My, my dad uh, ended up falling down on the steering column and getting his legs stuck. So I ended up, uh, I don't really know how it all took place, but there were people on the outside trying to help. I had to break uh, the shift handle off to get one of his legs out and, and was torquing on the steering column. And ultimately they got my dad out through the windshield and they got me out through the sunroof, uh, which was a sunroof I didn't even want until I needed to climb out of it. Uh, now I want a sunroof. But so how long were you trapped? I think we were trapped like 10 to 15 minutes, I, I think. Uh, I got out of the truck, started shaking glass off, and, and I mean, it was a miracle. It is a miracle that we're alive. And, and we're rolling, I'm sure by now, rolling some photos for you guys of the incident because I'm talking for a long time. Uh, we've got a little bit of video and a ton of photos, but essentially what took place, guys, is this woman crossed the line, hit me almost head on, and uh, she didn't make it. She was, she was trapped as well. She was life flighted and then, and then ultimately didn't make it. But it happened so far out in the middle of nowhere that it took forever for, for help to get out there. I mean, it, it took a long time. Uh, but when we got out of the vehicle, 
it's the middle of nowhere. There's no reception. The first thing I did was text Cece, uh, and I wanted her to know that we were okay. And, and somehow that text went through because there was nothing out there. Uh, you should let me read the text. Okay. Should I? Yeah. Can I get my phone? I have your phone. Uh, so I got a text through to Cece, and then it was, you know, it's a blur after that until until people started really arriving to help the sheriff and the highway patrol. But uh, there were some locals that helped, and I want to tell you about them because I want to spend more time talking about that than I want to talk about this crash. Yeah, so I was driving when Matt's text came through, and it said... Dad and I are totally okay. We're on our feet walking, just a little cut up. Terrible wreck, guy crossed the line and hit us head on. Everything is gone, but we are okay. And after that, I tried to get through to him for a long time, maybe 45 minutes or an hour. There's no cell service where he was. So, you know, not being able to talk to to someone after you you get a text like that was really hard um your mom really helped me get through that too she was really strong um and i just had to reread it over and over and tell myself that he told me he was okay and that you know my father-in-law was okay so i just waited and then eventually i did get through somehow somehow and we had a very short conversation before the call dropped and you told me that you were okay and you told me what happened. Um, and you told me that you didn't think that the woman was gonna be okay. Yeah. Um, it was bad, it was guys. It, it was, was bad. Uh, we are very blessed to be alive. Uh, I truly believe my dad and I have no business being alive. We really did get a second shot. I don't know why we got a second shot, but I look at that cab and I saw the other vehicle. Obviously, we're not going to show you guys that stuff, but I saw the other vehicle. We shouldn't be here. Talk about the people that helped you after yeah. you guys got out. So, what I really want to tell, tell you guys about is the people that, that took care of us. So we wrecked, I've already told you multiple times, we wrecked in the middle of nowhere. And I mean, it's way out there. Just grassland forever. Uh, if you've never been to Eastern Wyoming, it's beautiful, but I recommend not driving on their two lane roads. Uh, but it really is gorgeous country, antelope everywhere. Uh, but where we rolled, we rolled at the intersection with a dirt road. So we actually came to a stop in the, in the center of the highway teed into just a, a little dirt road that went back into the, the middle of nowhere and a, a truck came down out of there I don't know how long but sometime after the crash and uh, this guy hopped out started helping started running traffic getting people through because they hadn't closed the highway yet his name is JD and uh I don't know what we would have done without this guy. You know, there were a lot of people there because we blocked the highway. <laughs> people had no nowhere to go. So there were people around after a while. Uh, and ultimately ambulances came and helicopter came and all that stuff. But in the middle of all that was this one guy getting cars out of the way, directing people, picking up what was left of belongings and getting them off the highway making sure we were okay. He put my dad in his truck, cranked the AC, never even asked about us being covered in blood and glass. Put my dad in the truck and then came and got me. And I, I'm sure I thought I was good, but I'm sure I was just as bad. Came and got me, put me in the truck too, and just got us in some air conditioning because it was hot out there. And then ultimately talked to the sheriff. But this one guy just was almost running that show and he was just a guy that came out of nowhere we didn't know who he was and as everything started winding down he just stayed uh, he helped 
pick up the bits and pieces from the truck, helped get garbage off the road and back into the camper so they could haul it off. And uh, he ultimately called a crew, he got on a radio and made a call and more people came down this dirt road out of the middle of nowhere. And it was a crew. And they came down with a covered trailer and just picked up what was left of my belongings and loaded them in a trailer and, and drove back up that dirt road. And when everything settled hours later, when we were done talking to the police and done talking to the EMTs and got out of the ambulance, all that stuff, he said, all right guys, follow me and handed me the keys to a truck. And my dad and I hopped in that truck and next thing you know, we're driving down this dirt road in somebody else's truck, I mean, hours after this crash, which by the way, I do not recommend. <laughs> I thought I was okay. I didn't even realize I had been unconscious at that point. You know, you're so hopped up on adrenaline. Uh, but here we are driving down a road. It was so surreal. This guy took us to his house, got us cleaned up, gave us food, gave us something to drink. Let us make phone calls, let me talk to her, let my dad talk to my mom. Uh, started making calls, trying to arrange rental cars. I mean, it was, it was incredible. The, the people in Wyoming, and, and JD in particular, It's nice to be reminded of how kind people can, people can really be. Yeah. I didn't know people like that were still out there. Guys, once we got cleaned up, the nearest rental car was four hours away in Casper, Wyoming. When it was time to go, he, he got us connected with a hotel in a little tiny town down in Lusk, Wyoming. And uh, it was about an hour away. And then he said, all right, guys, it's time to go. And we went outside and he handed me the keys to a truck. And it wasn't his farm truck. He gave me the keys to the nicest truck he had. And we hooked that truck up to that covered trailer full of my belongings. And he just let us go. Long story short, we got to the hotel, got cleaned up. The next day we drove all the way to Casper, I'm sorry, still with his stuff, got a rental, loaded up the last of my belongings, and then got connected with him and he gave me an address. We drove out there and it was his elderly dad's house and his dad was just, just as nice. Met his dad. And then his, his, uh, another relative of his was standing there waiting to help us load up, helped us get everything into the rental car. And then he was taking that truck and trailer and driving four hours back to take that truck back. Don't know how you would have got out of there without mm -mm. him. I don't know. It was the middle of nowhere. People like that are incredible. He didn't want anything. He didn't know us. He didn't watch the videos. We were just people that blocked his driveway. Um, it's amazing that people like that are still out there. And there were a bunch of them. One of the EMTs has, has since the crash been incredibly kind to me. Uh, the main highway patrolman on the job there was was incredible i've talked to him multiple times i mean these people guys at the end of the day it's about people i mean we don't have any right to be here and we're beat up don't get me wrong but but we're gonna be okay uh we lost everything we lost the truck we lost a brand new camper we lost the boat we lost almost all the tackle i mean we just picked up bits and pieces and dragged it home uh, it's gonna be rough. My dad and I got beat up. You know, we both had to go to the ER. We're both seeing doctors. I, 
But I mean, in the scheme of losing your life, it's minor things, right? Uh, I will fish again. It's gonna be a while. I couldn't fish right now if I had to. My, I can't hold any weight in, in my left arm. I can, I can hold a couple pounds maybe, and then all of a sudden I'm torqued. This whole side just goes. Uh, but that's little stuff, right? I mean, I'm still here. We will still be doing video. We are pumped that we finally introduced you guys to our family. Uh, I think you're gonna see them in the videos in the future. And we're blessed, I will tell you this, we're blessed because this trip was coming. Tim and I, guys, we're fishermen, right? We're not, we're not business people, we're, we're fishermen. So we never do anything ahead of schedule. But because this trip was coming and we knew that Tim and I were gonna be apart so long, we, for once in our lives, actually pre-shot some videos, uh, which we never do. But we, we got some stuff pre-shot, so we're actually, this is all gonna work out. We have some content that we'll roll out. I'm even gonna be in some of it. I'll be fishing and talking and we'll run that stuff for a while. You guys aren't ever even gonna skip a beat. We're gonna keep teaching. Uh, we are so grateful for you guys. I don't think there's anything you guys need to do for us. We're gonna be okay. I wanted to thank everybody for your thoughts and prayers. We've had a lot of support. Um, yeah. Thank you to everybody in Wyoming that helped Matt and then back home to our friends and family. And you know, a lot of people that we've never even met that have offered help and offered to let us borrow their boats and trucks. And, and you guys really are like an extended family and we, we really appreciate it. It's nice to, to feel supported. We do. Uh, I mean, you guys don't know how much it helps. When we're sitting at home, you know, like Tim put the, the stuff up on Instagram because we needed to let people know. And there were like 800 and something comments and I did not respond to any of them. But I read them all. It makes a big difference. We appreciate you guys. This too shall pass. We're gonna be okay. We're moving right along. We're not done. Tactical is growing. It's because of you guys. Tim is on fire. He's producing great stuff. We had some stuff already shot that we're gonna run for you guys, and I will be back. Thank you guys. Thank you.